what's going on guys welcome back to another video oh on today's video guys we are installing my favorite boost gauge pod before we get started with today's video guys i wanted to thank aeroforce technologies for sending over this boost gauge pod now i was looking into this boost gauge pod a long time ago and to tell you the truth if they, they did not send this over i would have probably bought it anyway just because it was the design that i was going for on the car everyone does exactly the same boost gauge pod and i wanted you know as you guys know to show you guys a little something a little bit different and what i thought was a little bit cooler so this is what they sent over now this isn't your typical vent uh, boost cage pod it doesn't go on the side bottom vent it actually goes at the top on the dash um, and as you can tell here it goes directly onto uh, the top vent you pretty much just pop that open and slap this in there I'm gonna show you how to install your own boost cage on this vent pod and get it to work on your mark 7 GTI so before we can get this to work we have to do some uh, prep we got to pop open some of those vents that I need access to and also pop open the hood All right guys, so for this you're gonna need a Bojo tool. Um, I have this uh, VW bone tool that I got from ShopDap. Uh, you're gonna pop open this side piece here, and then we're gonna pop open this top uh, vent. Once you remove this, the top piece and the side piece, you actually need to take this entire thing off. Um, the good thing is that when installing this though, we're not gonna have to um, take off the actual vent, just the whole unit itself. So the easiest way I found to do this is to pry this back here and then twist it and this will allow you to start popping this out in here and pop this whole unit out. Once the unit is out, you're actually gonna come in here. You're gonna wanna drill a hole right at the top of that so that way you can get through to the top of this and run that hose down on the rest of the wires. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and run our hose, swing it over to the side over here, and you're gonna wanna run your wires up there as well. FYI guys, I found it easier to run two hoses or two holes, one on this side, one on this side. One to run the regular wires and one to run the boost uh, tap hose. So the reason why I did that is because the hose that I'm using, it's much thicker than I anticipated. So I guess if you drill one big hole, then you can definitely um, get both things through there. I'm gonna do two holes just to kind of keep things separate. Make sure that when you're running the wires though, you're running them off to the side over here on top of the vent because the vent is gonna slide back in here. Once you have all that stuff done, um, your boost gauge is pretty much installed. I have to push this down still, I haven't yet. Um, you're going to want to pop out the headlight switch. In order to do that, you're going to put it to the zero position, you push it in, and you twist it to the side, and then that will allow you to pop this out of here. The reason why you want to get this out of here is because you have to unplug the harness. Now, the harness is going to have a cover on the wires over here. We need to tap into these wires. I'm going to put a diagram on the screen. So that way you guys can kind of read along, but you're going to need to tap into four of these wires. Uh, the first one's going to be the 12 volt, 12 volt constant. Um, that's going to be a red and white wire or position eight. The 12 volt switch is going to be a black and yellow or position four. Dash lighting or dimmer switch is going to be your gray position 10. And your ground wire is going to be position six and it's going to be brown. So we're going to tap into these using these wire taps uh, that I purchased, uh, I think, from Walmart or something. Um, and you're going to need to tap into these wires. Now, because my wires originally from the boost gauge are not long enough, I actually cut out these six inch pieces, which are going to be perfect for extending um, these on here. So we're going to tap into these wires real quick and run them up to the top. I just want to make sure that this lighting works. So we're going to turn on the car to the accessory position. Unit done. Expand. There we go. Looks like it works. This gauge is actually from Amazon, but you can actually switch the colors. And I think I'm going to rock the white, which is this one here, or maybe the red. I'm not sure yet. All right, so now that that is all done, it looks like it works. Um, I got to run the boost cable through the firewall, but before we can do that, I have to tighten this up by. Uh, wrapping some electrical tape around these just to make a very secure connection that's not going to move around or touch anything that it's not supposed to so now that everything inside is pretty much done uh you got to take off the intake box if you have a stock oem box just go ahead and pull that up and remove the clamp i have engine intake installed right now 
So I am going to take it off how I know how to take this off. If I'm not mistaken, this should definitely be a 13. Yes, it is. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen that up. Cover here needs to come off. It's a little metal piece. You move that aside and this will allow your battery to kind of shift forward a bit. And guys, I know I make some things look easy um, because I am kind of, you know, this isn't a video and this is time crunch. This whole process is probably gonna take me about an hour. Um, it's not, I would say in a scale from one to 10, it's definitely like a, I don't know, like a seven, uh, just because of everything that's involved in it and you wanna make sure that you're checking or proof checking along the way. So that way you don't have to kind of go back or trying to find your mistakes. So I found this in one of Paul's videos, which I'll link down below from Deutsch Auto Parts, um, where he shows you where to kind of run things through the firewall. Um, I've already ran something through the firewall once. It was my wire for, the JB4 before I had the Bluetooth, so I know where to go. So I just gotta show you. Go ahead and remove this just because you're not gonna be able to access this otherwise. And you wanna kinda bend this up. And up here, this should be a boot. Um, I've already cut a hole through it, but you wanna make sure you cut a hole through it. And uh, just take this and run it through that hole. Run as much as you can of this hose up there because we're gonna go find and fish it. All right, so underneath the engine bay, you'll have the cable that you just ran. Um, I've also attached a little hose uh, connector to this uh, vacuum line connector that I got from AutoZone. And the boost tab that I decided to go with is the uh, CTS turbo one, just because um, it just seemed like the easiest one to install. And uh, I actually liked it the best. Um, and the way it mounts is just perfect because there's not a lot of um, drilling or anything like that that needs to happen. Uh, which is very nice. As far as this boost tap goes, it's gonna go on the sensor up here and you're gonna need a T20 to take that out. So let's take this off. Now the CTS Turbo one uh, goes directly in here. Pretty much just put this in its original location. Now, next step is really going to be to plug in the hose. We're gonna slide the sensor back in its place, push all the way down. And then instead of using the uh, screw that you originally took from here, CTS gives you a screw to use. Sensor still in its original location. We haven't drilled to the engine anywhere over here, which is nice, and it's the reason why I like this kit. Now, it's just a matter of plugging these two together. Right there. And running a new zip tie. All right, guys, so there we go. We're reading boost, which is good. Just make sure that when you're putting the uh, the boost gauge into the pod, you don't push all the way back because you can uh, pinch the hose and it won't read any boost. So make sure you guys do that. But other than that, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much, Arrow Force Technologies, for sending this over. I'll put the link down in the description below if you guys want to run this pod. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, guys. We've been growing quite a bit lately, and it's because a lot of the guys have been sharing the content. So thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for the loyal ones. See you in the next one, guys. Peace out.